Welcome to the digital studios at Cape Town Conversations. We are in the beautiful city of Cape Town for the first ever Cape Town Conversation. And with me is the very distinguished Dr. Ibtisam al Kitbi, founder, president of the Emirates Policy Center, an organization with which the ORF has a very, very close relationship. Uh, Dr. Ibtisam, amongst her many attributes is a scholar of, on, the, on the Middle East uh, and has also worked on uh, the UAE's relations with India. Dr. Ipsam, the Middle East or West Asia as we call it from our uh, vantage point is going through an exceptionally turbulent phase. Uh, the conflict in Gaza, the events since the Hamas terrorist attack of October 7, have really upended many of the uh, trends that we were witnessing in the region towards deeper economic cooperation, reconciliation between some of the uh, conflicts that we have are seeing in the region. It seems that several of those have taken a back seat and we've seen some of the most extreme violence perhaps on October 7 and in the six or seven weeks since October 7. And yet, in the last 24 hours, we've seen some reports that suggest uh, a ceasefire, temporary as it is, for four days, possibly extendable. The release of the first installment of hostages in exchange for Palestinian pr uh, prisoners. And, and maybe I can take the liberty of saying that this is the first sliver of hope that we've seen in seven weeks of intense suffering uh, in the region. Do you think this is sustainable? Do you think that the situation can de-escalate um, with all the efforts that are currently underway? Well, first, thanks for having me. And uh, let me say first, uh, Ambassador Nadi, this is, if I describe it, 7 October, it's what we call it in uh, a geopolitical expression, strategic shock. And it's a game changer in the region. This is not domestic. This is not regional. This is international uh, crisis. In terms of the party involved, uh, in that. The other things also, we have seen unprecedented heavy military American in the region. It's not been there during Iraq or uh, war or Libya war. And this is also raise a question, why this heavy military in the region? It's, of course, it's beyond Hamas and Israel, if you look at it. So the other thing, why this happened? You know, when there is losers, they become spoilers. When Saudi no, starting talks about normalization with Israel, they ignore Hamas and they went to PA to talk. When the Indian Middle East corridor happened, it excluded Iran from there. When the uh, American and European sanctioned Russia, also they've been excluding them. When this Indian Middle East corridor the Chinese look at it as the American alternative for Belt and Road. So China, Russia, Iran, Hamas, losers. So those, any losers, will become spoiler for any project in the region. Uh, so why I'm saying that? Because if you are looking to I don't know, is it ceasefire? Uh, ceasefire is more longer. You know, this is for 
days. And at the same time, we are talking about the escalation in Gaza. There is escalation in West Bank. The Israelis still they are. So also, who has the interest to stop this war? Hamas has no interest. Netanyahu's government has no interest. The American also has no interest. So nobody, the Russian has no interest. The Iranian also attacking another Israeli ship in the Indian Ocean. So I don't see this is for a long ceasefire. There is a hope, but I'm from a, a school of real politique. If you look at it, no, it is not. And if this has happened, it means the end of Netanyahu. I mean, Netanyahu will go to the jail. And I don't think Netanyahu has that interest to end that. So from a school of real politics that you speak about, what we are seeing, I think, is at two different levels. One is the band-aid solutions of trying to bring a ceasefire get the hostages back, um, do some of those short-term immediate things. And yet there is the longer-term cancer, if you will, that must be treated, whether surgically or through chemotherapy or whatever else, hard methods are needed. In the last 10 or 15 days, we have seen a flurry of diplomatic activity trying to come through some kind of a resolution. And most recently, on the 22nd of November, India had organized under its presidency the G20 virtual summit to follow up. And they issued a seven point um, plan for resolving the um, Israel-Palestine issue and asked for a long-term durable settlement. BRICS, under the presidency of South Africa, where we are sitting, has again organized an emergency virtual summit and issued a very strong statement. Most important, I think, was the extraordinary summit of the Arab and Islamic nations, where they have appointed a very large influential ministerial committee led by Saudi Arabia, which has already visited Beijing, Moscow, Paris, London, to reach out to the permanent members of the Security Council to find a solution. Now, on your point about real politic, everybody has been saying, we have to have a two-state solution. We have to go back to the 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as the capital. But there is a reality on the ground, which is that in the last 30, 40 years, the number of illegal Israeli settlements that have come up in West Bank and in East Jerusalem make it very difficult to establish a viable Palestinian state. I was reading an old article about Gaza and how in 2005 it was so difficult for Israel to remove 12,000 Palestinian uh, Israeli settlers from, from, from Gaza. Today you're looking at 700,000. So real politic question, is a viable Palestinian state possible today even though it is the aspiration for all of us? Real politics says, first, with all respect to all these initiatives, including that FAS initiative, the uh, King Abdullah initiative, okay? It needs, I mean, tango needs two to dance, okay? This is the Arab initiative, this is the other initiative. But there is a government in Israel, okay, since Netanyahu came, doesn't want that. And who has that leverage on Israel from real? Nobody, none of those has a, I mean, the American, they couldn't. So 
This is needs. There is many scenario of the day after Gaza. McGorg in his speech in Manama Dialogue uh, last week, he mentioned that Gaza will be governed by Palestinian Authority. Okay? And, and from that, they will take it to, he didn't mention two state, but something that peace will be. And of course, I ask him, but did you ask the Palestinian there? What do they want? Do they want a Abbas government? Why you are imposing something from your side, regardless of the Palestinian, uh, what, what, they, what they need, what they look? And, and this is another, I think, if it happened, we will have another civil war between Palestinians and them, themselves. And we've had that before uh, yeah, between, between Fatah and uh, Hamas. Uh, and, and I was struck, I was reading a report today <clears throat> that uh, following the release of the first set of hostages uh, and Palestinian prisoners yesterday, they were welcomed in West Bank with Hamas flags. Uh, and, and, and that again shows, uh, at least to the uh, observer in the region, uh, that Hamas today, despite all that it has done, it resonates with the Palestinian people more than the PA does. Ambassador Nadim. Do you know what is my concern? You are right. It's not only the Palestinian. It's even the secular Arab now, okay, uh, promoting Hamas. My concern, there is, and this is, I mentioned, uh, there is a new Islamist jihad is coming. If you look to the North Africa, okay, they are a new jihadist for Gaza are coming, and this is, my concern that we, the extremists from both sides and the clash, so all this will take us to the next uh, uh, topic we have been discussed before, uh, the connectivity, the I uh, to you too, the, the uh, Indian Middle East corridor. Those need stability because basically they are based on economy and economy cannot flourish or prosper in instability and wars. And Israeli now, the, this war cost them 300 million every day, every day. So their economy is very weak. How can they add to I to you? How can they add with this war to uh, uh, the Indian Middle East corridor? And they are in, in, in war. This is affect Abrahamic Accord also. And all these projects, and Naqab Summit, well, all these uh, economic projects, everything is stopped because of the war. So in a sense, what we're seeing is the classic impact of a geopolitical development on the geoeconomics possibilities, where the volatility of politics is going to disrupt the plans that were being put forth for uh, e the economic connectivity. And it's so unfortunate because that economic connectivity could have actually helped the politics of the region. Uh, but it, it, for the time being, it seems that the politics is going to dominate the uh, economics. Thank you very much. That's all we had the time uh, for today. And uh, welcome back from uh, Digital Studio at Cape Town Conversation.